for today, I have got a mod video for you. These will look pretty cool as well as hopefully being functional. We're actually gonna test that and see how much of a difference it actually makes. They look awesome. What's going on guys? Now I'm sorry there's been a lack of mod videos lately, but you guys know that I've been having some issues with this car. Now we're not quite out of the woods just yet, but I'll explain what I'm talking about in a future video. So if you're not subscribed to this channel yet, make sure you do so you don't miss that. But for today, I have got a mod video for you. Not only is it gonna look cool, but it should also be functional as well. And we're actually gonna test that and see how much of a difference it actually makes or they actually make. What I've got are some custom 3D printed intake vents which go in the lower grill. I've got one for each side. They're a two piece vent and they have this little collector on the back so we can run some air ducting up to our air filter. As you guys probably know, we've got a Ram Air cone filter on this car and I've just got back from work and if I put my hand in here, I can feel that it is still quite warm around this filter and I probably cut back about half an hour ago. So there's clearly quite a lot of heat that collects around here. Yes, okay, when I'm driving, cold air will come in through the grill at the front and help keep that cool, but still, I reckon we can get the intake temperatures a little bit cooler. These vents should help us funnel air up from the front grill. And like I said, I've got some air ducting to run down behind here and up towards the filter to try and get some colder intake temperatures. Now, unfortunately, I haven't got a way of actually measuring whether or not we're gonna get any performance gains with these vents, but I've had an idea of how we can measure the intake temperatures and see how much of a difference they actually make. Now, if you're looking to get a set of these for yourself, I'll let you know where I pick them up later in the video, but for now, we need to get on with prepping these ready to go in the car. Like I said at the start of the video, these are also gonna look pretty cool as well as hopefully being functional, but I've got a couple of options when it comes to how these are gonna look. When these first arrived, I was thinking of going down the stealth route and just leaving them black, possibly painting them gloss, black and having them hide in the black of the front grille. But then after showing these to a few of my friends, they suggested that I should wrap them in red, the same color as the car. So at this point, I'm kind of torn with what to do with these. Should I leave them black or should I wrap them? Let me know what you would do in the comments below. I think if I go with the stealth look, these will look pretty cool and they'll kind of look like the lower grille on the Mark II Focus RS. And I believe that is the style the guy who made these was going for when he designed them. But like I said, let me know in the comments what you would do I think I've made up my mind. One thing's for sure though, whether I'm gonna wrap these or whether I'm just gonna leave them black, I think either way I'm gonna paint them because wrap probably won't stick to this 3D printed plastic very well. And I just think it would be a nicer overall finish if I painted them first. But I only really need to worry about the faces because like I said, these are a two piece vent and this piece kind of sits behind the grill and then screws through and almost clamps it. This little ridge here clamps it to the grill. So I haven't really got to worry about painting or wrapping any of this, just this front piece. I did have a quick go at wrapping the other side off camera. And as you can see, it's not really stuck very well. It actually did at first have been like this for a couple of days, but it has started to peel eventually. And again, I think that's because of the texture of this 3D printed surface. But just for reference, what do you guys think? But either way, we need to prep these. So let's jump in the shed and get these ready for paint. Now I've not done any finishing work on 3D prints before, but I can see straight away that it's gonna be kind of a pain to get this surface smooth and ready for paint. But I've spoken to the guy who made these and he recommended this. This is a spray putty, so it's kind of like a high fill primer, but it's a bit thicker and should fill in all the little gaps in here and hopefully give us a nice clean, smooth surface that we can then lay some plastic primer and finally some base coat over the top of this. And then, well, we can either lacquer that or we could wrap it. But before I spray this, I've noticed that there's quite a few little loose bits left over from the printing process. I'm not sure if they're coming across on camera, but yeah, you can just see all those little loose bits left over from the printer. I mean, that's nothing about the quality of the print, that just happens. We've got a 3D printer in work as well and you get the same sort of thing. That's just something that happens with 3D prints. But just to try and remove that, I'm gonna give these a quick scuff up just with some 220 grit sandpaper. So it's gonna give that a quick scuff, try and remove all those loose little bits left over from printing and then we can spray our spray putty and hopefully get a nice smooth surface and then we can paint them. And then after a quick wipe down with the panel prep degreaser, these are feeling nice and smooth and we've removed all those loose little pieces of plastic left over from printing. So these are now ready for our first coat of spray putty. Now I don't really like spraying in my shed because it's quite a confined space with the fumes and everything. So while I've got a little bit of daylight left and decided I'm gonna do the spray putty outside. And then once these are flashed off, I'm gonna take them inside to dry. And then we can flap them back with some 400 grit sandpaper, like it says on the back of the can. And then once we've done that, we can play some plastic primer and then some base coat. And then finally make a decision on whether I'm just gonna leave these painted or whether I'm gonna wrap them.
Okay, so I gave these things four or maybe five coats of that spray putty, and this is how they're looking. They've had three or four hours to dry, and you know they are totally dry now, so they're pretty much ready to sand back. They're looking pretty good as they are. There are a few little bits you can still see, but I'm hoping that with a little bit of sanding, we can get these nice and smooth, ready for plastic primer and then some base coats. So it says on the can that you want to sand these back with, it says to use 400 grit sandpaper. Now, the closest thing I've got is some 600, and if they're more abrasive than that, I'm looking at like 240, so I don't really want to go that heavy on them because I've heard that this sands quite easily. So I'm just going to scuff these up lightly with this, try and get these nice and smooth, and then we'll be ready to spray some plastic primer. Actually, it does say on the can that after you've sanded these with 400 grit, it says to then apply a finishing coat of this before you apply a primer. So we're going to apply one more coat of this probably. I'm not too sure because I'm not sure if I want to put any more texture on, but then saying that, these are already quite smooth. Like I could probably paint them as is, so I'm not too fussed about putting another coat of this. It's not like some high fill primers where it leaves the surface quite textured. So yeah, we're going to sand these back, like I say, with 600 because I haven't quite got any 400, but this will do. And then one final coat of that, and then we're going to hit it with plastic primer. Okay, so these are all sanded up. I didn't think you needed to watch me do all of that because you've seen me sand and paint an awful lot of stuff recently. So I thought I'd just get that over nice and quickly. And you know what? I'm so impressed with this stuff. Like, I was really skeptical because Simply Sprays, I've used their stuff before when I painted my rear brake calipers. I used Simply Sprays caliper paint and that stuff was rubbish. So I was really skeptical when Matt recommended me this, but I'll tell you what, this stuff is awesome. It's brought these out so smooth, like to the touch, they just feel like you wouldn't know that that was 3D printed. Like that stuff is awesome. So what we're gonna spray these with, I've got some gray plastic primer, some gloss black and some clear lacquer left over from when I did the bumper plastics. Now, if you remember the bumper plastics on the STs have that like textured feel to them. So I've got a feeling that if you use some of that first, if you sanded them down, used some of that, then went in with the Holy Trinity, I reckon you'd get a really smooth looking finish, like even better than the finish I got. If you haven't checked out that video, where I painted all the bumper plastics and the trim and the grills and stuff, then go check that out. I'll leave a link to it in the description so you can find it. But for this video, we need to get on with painting these. So we're actually going to head down to somewhere that I'm quite excited to spend a lot more time in the coming videos. And I'll explain that once we get down there. So let's go. Okay, so here we are. Now, this is my parents' new place, or more specifically, their new garage. Now, I know it's full of stuff at the minute, but I'm hoping that once they've had a little bit of work done in the house, because they're using this while they have some work done inside, like storage and stuff like that. So hopefully, once all that's done, we can spend a bit more time in here, especially over the coming months, over winter, when it's cold and wet and windy and snowy and all sorts of other horrible conditions outside. Hopefully, we can get in here with the cars and get some work done and it'll let me work in the dark as well. I get home from work, it's dark and I can't really do anything outside. So hopefully I'll be able to come down here and we can get some stuff filmed in the garage. So I'm really excited and grateful to them for letting me use this. And luckily they only live a couple of minutes down the road. So that is awesome. Now, one thing I want to address before we get on to painting those vents is what else I'm doing down here. Now, these are a brand new set of rear calipers. If you remember in the last video, I said this. I wanna be as transparent as I can with this car. And I meant it, but I put those calipers back together. Everything looked fine. And then a couple of days later, I noticed that the calipers were leaking again, or specifically the one that I repaired or tried to repair. It just didn't work and I've got my MOT coming up. So I just thought I'd bite the bullet and buy a new set of calipers. But yeah, like I said, I just wanna be totally transparent with this. Like I tried to fix those calipers and unfortunately it didn't work. But anyway, enough of that. What we're here for is these things. So it's time for me to clean these down with some panel prep, hit them with one more coat of that spray putty and then we'll go through the plastic primer, the gloss black and finally clear lacquer. But like I've said plenty of times, you guys have watched me do so much painting lately part of the reason why I haven't filmed me painting these. So we're just gonna throw the time lapse on and you can just watch me fly through this nice and quickly and then we can get to wrapping these if we're gonna wrap them. Still haven't decided yet, but we'll find out once these are painted what I'm gonna do with them. And then finally, we can get them installed.
Okay, it's the next day. These have had overnight to dry and they are looking awesome. I'm so happy with the finish that we got on these. But now this leaves me with a decision to make. Are we going to leave them black, go for the stealth look, or are we going to wrap them? Oh, come on, you guys know from the start. We were always going to wrap them. Let's go. Okay, so the vents are wrapped and now it's time to fit them in the grill. If there's one thing I love about wrapping is you haven't got to wait for anything to dry. So I've already gone ahead and popped the grill out. It's just a few clips around the outside. I didn't think I'd need to show you that. Thanks, Leaf, for getting in the way of my video. So all I'm going to do is I'm just going to line up the vents with the grill like that. Then using the back of the vent as a template, I'm just going to mark around to see where we need to cut. And then I'm just going to cut this out using the Dremel. There we go, that's the first little piece out. It has made a hell of a mess, but hopefully I can clean that up and then we can get the vent in. But hey, there we go. That's one in. Okay, so I've gone ahead and done the other side off camera just because I'm conscious of the time and losing daylight, but they're both fitted in there nice and snugly, so. Next thing to do is we turn it over. We've got the collectors to go on the back. And then there's some holes in there which screw into the front piece. We even got the screws. He gave us a little bag of screws with it. So let's see if we can get that installed. The issue is this little tab here. He said you do kind of lose that tab. So I think I'm gonna have to cut that off. And then we may actually be able to put both of these on and then slide it in. Hopefully there'll just be enough flex in the grill. We should be able to do that. That's how Matt told me to do it. So let's just get this one screwed in. Okay, so that's both collectors screwed in. Let's see if we can actually get this in the car with those on. Hopefully we can just about bend the grill enough without snapping it. It's got to get some of these clips lined up now. And there we go. I think we're in. And that looks awesome. Oh my God, they look so cool. Okay, so that's the vents in and they look awesome. Now, as well as looking cool, I told you that these are going to be functional. Well, at least I'm hoping so. So what I've got is some air ducting from Ram Air. If you've been following me on Instagram, you'll see I had a delivery in a Ram Air box. And I asked you to guess what was in there. Well, it was just some air ducting, nothing too exciting, but it will be exciting if we can get the intake temperatures down. But unfortunately, we're not gonna be able to do that in this video. I know, I'm really sorry. I was hoping to get onto it today, but I'm fighting against time and more the lighting outside. And I just don't think I'm gonna have time to get it all done. Plus there's a couple of other bits I need if I'm gonna do this properly. And one last excuse is it's quite cold out today. So we might not get the best comparison of the before and after once we fitted that air duct in. So if you wanna see just how much of a difference they do make and you're not subscribed to this channel, make sure you do so you don't miss that because that'll be coming up in the next video. But before we end, if you wanna get a set of these awesome vents for yourself, then the guy you need to get in contact with is Matt Emmins and I'll leave a link to his Facebook in the description so that you can find him, add him, drop him a message and get yourself a set of these because they just look so cool. So go check Matt out and go drop him a message if you wanna get a set of these for yourself. He even sent me a little 3D printed Mark 6 Fiesta in the package. 
So how awesome. I mean, the workmanship has gone into these. God knows how many iterations he had to go through before he got them right. And um, just the quality of these is awesome. So definitely go and check him out, show him some love and get a set for yourself. Also guys, just a quick note from Matt, please, if you are gonna order a set of these, please bear in mind that he is one guy with one printer. So he hasn't just got sets of these sitting, waiting, ready to go. And there may be a little bit of a lead time if a lot of you order at once. So he's just asked guys, if you're gonna order them, please be patient. But for this video, it is time to end. So I wanna say one last time, a huge thank you to Matt for sorting me out with these vents and a massive thank you to each and every one of you for watching. See you next time.